Hi everybody, in this video we're looking at the cell ultrastruct structure in eukaryotes. So by eukaryote we mean um, cells that have a true nucleus. So we are not talking about prokaryotes, which includes uh, things like bacteria. Okay, so first of all, in a eukaryotic cell, first thing we have is, uh, is our cell membrane. So the cell membrane encloses the whole cell. It's made of a phospholipid bilayer. Um, and on the inside, you've got the cytoplasm. So it's a cytoplasm, um, it's, a, it's got a lot of water in it. And within that cytoplasm, you have a lot of organelles. So we need to know about the organelles that are found um, enclosed within the cell surface membrane um, and what they do. Within the, the liquid part of the cytoplasm, which we call the cytosol, that's where a lot of the uh, enzyme-catalyzed reactions take place within the cell. So if the, we think about this in terms of a bit of a story then, so let's imagine that there's some kind of maybe a bacterial cell um, outside here, maybe this is some kind of a white blood cell, for example, and we want to think about how this cell, um, so how this cell here, uh, would go about producing proteins that it might release to um, perhaps maybe go and help with the digestion of this bacterial cell. So the first thing we have to, is our nucleus. Now the nucleus of a cell is surrounded by a membrane um, and it's actually a double membrane. Um, inside the nucleus we've got obviously our DNA. Now the double membrane of nucleus is known as the nuclear envelope. So again, it's a phospholipid bilayer, but it's actually in, in two layers. So there are two bilayers forming this nuclear envelope. And the nuclear envelope has got holes in it, which we call nuclear pores. So those nuclear pores um, allow larger molecules to um, leave from the nucleus and go out into the cytoplasm. So if our end goal is to make some proteins which can be released from the cell, then we need to use the genetic code in our DNA. This is just showing one strand of DNA, so one chromosome. There would actually be lots of chromosomes within the nucleus. Um, and the first thing that has to happen is that that DNA or part of the DNA has to be turned into a copy. And this is now a copy of the DNA, which is messenger RNA or mRNA. Um, and the reason he has to do that is because the DNA is too big to be able to pass through the nuclear pores, but the messenger RNA is able to move out. And where it goes, first of all, is to an organelle which is called endoplasmic reticulum. So you can see here that it's um, a, series of, a series of tubes, and you can see that it's actually continuous here, with the nuclear envelopes. The nuclear envelope comes along and then just becomes the endoplasmic reticulum. Um, and this endoplasmic reticulum has got um, ribosomes on it. And the ribosomes are made here in the nucleolus. So this grey area is an area within the nucleus, um, a small region, sort of spherical-ish region, which is where ribosomal RNA is made. So Ribosomal RNA is made in the nucleolus um, and the ribosomes are found all over the endoplasmic reticulum. So this is rough endoplasmic reticulum. So once the messenger RNA has been produced, it then leaves the nucleus by going out through the nuclear pore into the, uh, the tubes or the, the sacs of the endoplasmic reticulum. Um, and those sacs are called cisternae. As it travels through the endoplasmic reticulum, um, it will attach onto uh, one of the ribosomes. And the ribosome is the site of protein synthesis. So this messenger RNA is a template of a gene on the, D uh, on the, uh, the DNA. And the ribosome takes that code and turns it into polypeptide chain. We'll look at the details of how that happens um, at a later point in the course. So we've now got a polypeptide um, in the lumen of the rough endoplasmic reticulum and that now has to pass to another organelle in order to be modified. 
So what you saw happening there, we've now got our polypeptide here inside this enclosed uh, membrane. So this is called a vesicle. So if I just go back, what you can see happening is our polypeptide is here inside the endoplasmic reticulum. And then the end of it, so this, the membrane here, encloses and we then end up with our polypeptide inside the vesicle. So at no point did that polypeptide end up in the cytoplasm. It was always enclosed by membrane. This organelle here is the Golgi apparatus. So this is where the protein is going to get modified. So this vesicle containing the polypeptide is going to travel across here towards the Golgi apparatus. And once it's there, it will fuse with the membrane of the Golgi apparatus. Okay, so now the polypeptide is in uh, the lumen of one of the Golgi apparatus um, membranes, cisternae as well. We can call them cisternae too. Before we think about what happens in the Golgi, there is another organelle called the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. So you can see that it looks very similar to the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Uh, the only difference is that it doesn't have any ribosomes on the surface, so it has a smooth appearance. Now this smooth ER is actually um, continuous with the rough ER, so they're all together. And actually most of the, uh, the cell is going to be full of rough and smooth ER. The function of the smooth endoplasmic reticulum is to synthesize lipids, including uh, cholesterol. And then, just as we saw over here, when lipids are synthesized in the smooth ER, they get packaged into a vesicle, and that vesicle then travels across and can fuse with the Golgi. Okay, so we've now got then either our polypeptide or it could be our lipid which has arrived and fused um, so it's now inside the cisternae of the Golgi apparatus um, and the function of the Golgi is to take the lipid or the, or the polypeptide and modify and process it. So what will happen is um, if we just say that we're talking about the polypeptide this polypeptide will travel through this cisterna here and it will then get pinched off and move down and join this one and it will be moved down through this series of tubes each time as it gets to the end, pinching off in a vesicle and going to the next one, until you end up at the end with your final polypeptide or lipid, which has been processed. So that might mean that it's uh, it might have been um, it might have had non-protein parts added. So maybe it's had uh, carbohydrate parts added. If it's a protein, it that would now be a glycoprotein. Um, it might have had carbohydrate added to the lipid, so it's a glycolipid. Um, it's been folded up to make the, the three-dimensional shape so that it can function properly. Once it's reached the, uh, the final part of the Golgi apparatus, um, this will now pinch off, and our vesicle containing our now complete protein is ready to go wherever it needs to go. So it might be that it has to go um, towards the cell surface membrane and then fuse with the cell surface membrane and release the contents outside. So if this was uh, were an enzyme, maybe a, um, some sort of a digestive extracellular enzyme, then that might happen. Maybe this is something which is then going to go and be used to help to, to destroy the bacteria, for example. The other thing that could happen, though, is our vesicle could move elsewhere in the cell. If this is an enzyme, then we would call this vesicle a lysosome. So it's um, an organelle which has got a, a membrane around it um, and it's got hydrolytic enzymes inside it. Obviously that's really important, the, the, the membrane there, so we don't want, if there are hydrolytic or digestive enzymes in here, we don't want them to be out um, outside of the membrane because then they might actually be able to digest the organelles within the cell itself. So um, this vesicle or the lysosome can go anywhere in the cell. We've already seen that it might move to the cell surface membrane. It might have to go elsewhere. So in terms of moving around the cell, it actually moves on microtubules. 
So the next thing we need to look at are the centrioles. So what you can see here, the centrioles, um, they're made of uh, microtubules. So it's a, it's a protein and they form a structure where you've got tubes, this sort of, this protein, it's called tubulin, and we get this series of three microtubules and then they're then arranged There are nine sets of three arranged like this. So this is a centriole, okay? So nine sets of three microtubules. And they always come in pairs, and they're always at right angles to each other. Okay, so this one here is upright, and then this centriole here is at right angles. And that's why you can see here what it looks like, one circle and one sort of rectangle like that. Now, the centrioles. Um, organize microtubules. So they organize microtubules when cell division takes place um, and they also um, are where the, the cytoskeleton comes from. So when we were just talking about how these vesicles are able to move around the cell, that's because from the centrioles come microtubules. So this is the cytoskeleton of the cell. And it's like a scaffolding that goes throughout the whole cell. So vesicles, like this one here, are actually able to move along the microtubules to get where they need to go. Now in order for that movement to happen, energy is needed. So the vesicles, they're not moving along by diffusion. They're actually being moved using energy, using ATP. They're being moved along the microtubules. So the next thing that we need are mitochondria. So the mitochondria is another organelle with a double membrane. So we've already seen that the nucleus has a double membrane. Mitochondria also has an inner and an outer membrane, so a double membrane. Um, inside the mitochondria, um, there are actually also ribosomes. So ribosomes throughout, but these are smaller than the ribosomes you find on the uh, rough endoplasmic reticulum. So the ribosomes here on the rough ER are called ATS ribosomes. Ribosomes that you find in the mitochondria are smaller. They are 70S ribosomes. There's also a loop of DNA inside the mitochondria um, and that DNA is used, um, it's the code to, used to code for various enzymes that are needed for respiration. So ATP is generated in the mitochondria and that ATP can then be used for you know, all of the various cell uh, functions, including moving vesicles around uh, on the cytoskeleton and also um, exocytosis and endocytosis are other examples of uh, where ATP is need within, needed within a cell. Okay, so what about um, plant cells? So plant cells are also eukaryotic. They basically, all the organelles that we've just mentioned, except centrioles, are found in, um, in all plant cells. But they then also have a couple of things as well. So first of all, we know um, that plant cells, of course, have a cell wall. And the cell wall is made of cellulose. Um, and this cellulose cell wall um, gives a lot of strength to the cell and provides um, lots of structure. The cell wall's also got other things in it, so there might be um, other polysaccharides like hemicellulose and pectin as well. So the cell wall provides mechanical strength. Water is also able to move along through the cell wall. Large permanent vacuoles. So there might be small temporary vacuoles in plant cells, um, but the, the, large uh, the large permanent vacuole is only found in plants. Um, and this is the tonoplast. So the tonoplast is the name for the membrane surrounding the vacuole. Okay, if we were to draw another cell next to our first cell, um, in between the two cells here, 
So where the two cell walls meet is an area called the middle lamella. Uh, the middle lamella is basically the bit which is sticking our two adjacent cell walls together. Um, so two adjacent cells can be connected by something called the plasma desma. Um, this basically you can see that the cytoplasm here is continuous with the cytoplasm here um, and the cell membranes, the cell membranes also there are continuous. So this is a bit like a tunnel that leads from one cell to another and there would be maybe several of those or even lots and lots of them uh, connecting to adjacent plant cells. One of them is called the plasma desma. If there's more than one then we talk about plasma desmata. Um, as I mentioned already, we would also have all of the other stuff that we've seen. So obviously the, the nucleus, um, nucleolus, we'd have endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi apparatus. That would all be here as well, but I'm just not showing it. Uh, what I will show you, though, is mitochondria, um, because we also, of course, have chloroplasts in plant cells, and they're slightly larger than the mitochondria are. Um, in fact, I might actually make this even bigger, just to show you. That shows a little bit better now than how the, uh, the chloroplast is bigger than the mitochondria. Okay, although that might not be every single bit of detail, that covers the, uh, the key parts of eukaryotic cells and their key functions.